Hi, Courtney. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. My name's Megan, and I'll be your counselor over the next few sessions. Um, but before we start anything, I just want to go over the concept of informed consent with you, which you just signed before you came into my office. Um, it goes over things such as my billing practices and scheduling procedures, as well as my qualifications to be a counselor, but also goes over the idea of confidentiality. So everything that we talk about here is confidential and stays between us, except in the case of if you were to say that you were going to harm yourself or another person, I would have to do my due diligence to inform the correct parties about that. Do you have any questions? No, that makes sense. Okay, great. Um, I also want to let you know that I am a Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy Counselor, or REBT, as it's more commonly known. Do you have any questions about that? No. Okay, that sounds great. Um, so before we begin, tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I am a freshman at Kane University, and I'm a psychology major. I have an older brother. He graduated from Hofstra University. Um, I enjoy going to New York City. I love to take day trips there and just explore the city. And I also come from a town in New Jersey that's very close to the beach. So I'm a big beach person. And I enjoy the summer. Oh, that's my favorite season. So just to make sure that I have all this correct, you have an older brother who graduated from Hofstra University. And you are a freshman at King studying psychology, which is great. Um, you also come from a town that's near the beach, so you love to go soak up a few rays during the summer. And you also mentioned that you like going into the city, which, do you like to go to Broadway, or is it just kind of an outing type thing? No, I love to experience all different types of the city. Um, I love Broadway shows. I've seen a lot of them throughout my life. Um, I enjoy different restaurants and going to Central Park. Okay. I like it. <laughs> all, all good things, all good things. Um, so tell me a little bit why you're here today. Okay, so I am here to see you because I've been having some trouble with feeling very lonely at school. It's my first year, and I get along really well with my roommate. We were really close in the beginning of the year, but we've drifted apart a little bit. Um, I'm also feeling lonely with regards to my friends from home because I was so close to them for so long and now being apart from them they're at universities that are pretty far away from here so I don't see them or talk to them as much and I've been feeling kind of depressed. Okay so it sounds like there's a lot going on here. Um, to clarify if I'm wrong but it seems like your first semester was going pretty well. You and your roommate got along great. And then she started to maybe branch off and make some other friends. Were they with people on your floor or just other people in her major, on campus in general? It was um, actually her classes were in different majors. She's a biology major, so it's totally different from what I'm doing. And she okay. has made a lot of friends in her classes. And they have a lot of projects and things like that to do together. So um, it takes away from the time that we had together. Okay, that makes sense. Um, it also sounds like you and your friends from home might be drifting apart since you go to different universities, which is totally normal. It's a part of life and it happens. Just so I have a better understanding of your past, how was your social life in high school like? Well, when I was in high school, I was kind of just friends with everybody. I never felt rejected or alone. I was involved in numerous activities in school. So I was in the drama club and I was very close with everybody there. I also managed the basketball team and the baseball team. So I was friends with the athletes. And in my classes, I had the opportunity to meet new people because I didn't have as many classes with my good friends. So mm -hmm. I was able to make connections all the time and I never really felt this depression. Okay, how have these feelings of depression come up besides this? I feel like there's a little bit more going on here. Well, I noticed this past weekend that social media is a big part of my life, and this day and age, like, it's 
a part of, I think, everybody's life. And mm-hmm. everybody's posting their pictures on the weekends or posting statuses saying what they're doing. And I just see my friends from home going out with their new roommates and all of their new friends from school. And then I see, like, my roommate when she goes out, goes out on the weekend with her friends. Like, they just look like they're having such a good time. And me not having those friends to go out with, it kind of adds to my depression and just makes me feel like I'm rejected. Okay, so it sounds like in addition to the depression, you might have some feelings of self-pity because you feel bad for yourself in comparison to the people around you. You say that's accurate? Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, but has something happened more recently that it's really the reason why you decided to come to therapy? Yeah, actually, about two weeks ago, I tried to get into a sorority, and they didn't accept me. So ever since then is when I've really been feeling depressed. I thought that I would get in, and I was really excited about it, and now I'm just feeling really low, and I, you know, couldn't believe that I didn't get in. Okay, so it sounds like that would be your activating event, as we call it in REBT. Um, so what do you hope to gain from therapy? What do you hope to achieve? Um, I hope that I one day can make those connections with people and find a place where I belong and a group of people that I belong to instead of just kind of being by myself and being alone. I I want to feel like I'm friends with people and not just myself. I think a goal could be to accept yourself as a person for your whole identity. Do you think that that makes sense? Yeah, I I understand that. In REBT, there is a specific process that we go through, which includes assessing your belief, your irrational belief, which we'll do in our next session, and then disputing that belief in order to create a new, healthier way of thinking. Do you have any questions about that? No, that makes sense. Before we begin, I just want to summarize what we talked about last session, where we have discovered that your activating event has been not getting into the sorority and that has been causing you feelings of depression and loneliness. So now we're going to assess the situation to find out your irrational beliefs. So what exactly did you think when you didn't get a bit into the sorority? I was just really being down on myself and asking myself questions like, are you not dressing the right way? Or are you not behaving the way they want me to behave? Or are you just not good enough? I just felt like it had to be something I was doing wrong. Okay, so it sounds like you were second guessing a lot of your actions, maybe words or behaviors that you did during these sorority events. Would you say that's true? Yeah. Okay, so what did you do when you felt this way? Well, that weekend I decided that I didn't want to go out or do anything. I kind of just stayed in my dorm room. I kind of just sat in my own sadness and let myself feel depressed because I I didn't think I was worth going out and having a good time. I didn't have a place going out. I just, you know, was rejected and it it was what it was. Okay, so it sounds like to me that you might have been punishing yourself a little bit for not getting into the sorority. Um, It also sounds like you might be avoiding other people um, out of some sort of fear. Yeah, I mean, I just, I hate feeling rejected. I don't want people to not like me. I want to feel like I'm a part of something or, you know, like I have those friends. So I think it's just easier for me to stay in my dorm room and just wallow instead of going out and having people tell me that I'm not good enough. Okay, what happens if people don't like you? What happens if you're rejected? Then... That just adds to my depression. I, I, It just shows that I don't have friends. And what happens if you're alone all the time, if you don't have any of these friends or connections? Then I just feel like I'm not good enough. I feel like I 
you know, maybe even don't belong at the school. Like, I just, I feel like sometimes I just want to go home because I don't belong here. So you're questioning your identity as a student on the campus as well because of these feelings. Yeah. Uh, what would be so awful if you were alone all the time or if you say you transferred? What would be so awful about all of these things? Well, I just wouldn't have those memories. I wouldn't have those friends to go do things with and to be able to, you know, have a good time on the weekends or have people to go eat lunch with or just talk about my day. I just, I don't have that opportunity to make those connections. And what happens if you don't have any of that? Then I'm... Good for nothing, really. I, I'm just worthless. Okay, so I think that we've hit your irrational belief, which is that you feel that you need to be surrounded by other people or have the acceptance of other people in order to be a good person, in order to be a worthwhile individual. Would you say that that's accurate, that that might be something that's true? Yeah, I, I think you're right. Okay, so I think that over... The process of therapy, um, we could work on changing these awfulizing and self-downing beliefs into ones more of a preference or anti-self-downing so that you have that more positive view of yourself, which is what we hope to achieve. Um, I also have seen that you are exhibiting some signs of self-pity through your comparisons to others, whether it's through social media or just watching your roommate going out to do things. So we'll also combat that. Um, through developing unconditional self-acceptance. And I just want you to think about that over the next session, um, before the next session, sorry, um, so that when we dispute these beliefs, that it'll be easier to think about. Okay, that sounds really good. Okay, but before the next session also, I'm going to assign you a homework assignment. Um, it might be a hard one. So I'd like you to try not to go on Instagram for the whole weekend. I know that sounds kind of scary, but I just want to see how it goes, and I want you to come back with your thoughts so we can reflect on it here together. How does that sound? It sounds like it might be difficult, but I'll try my best. Okay. We'll talk about it next week. Okay. Hi, Courtney. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Um, before we begin today, disputing the beliefs and going over the Instagram assignment I gave you, I just wanted to briefly bring up the idea of termination. Uh, termination is the end of counseling, so I won't be able to be by your side forever, unfortunately. So it's important that you learn how to use these techniques that we use here in therapy on your own so that you could further help yourself and maybe even help others. Okay. Do you have any questions about that? Not right now. Okay. If you ever have any questions or concerns or any feelings that come up, we could definitely talk about it here or over the phone. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So... Tell me a little bit about how you felt about this Instagram assignment. <laughs> it was really difficult. I think that nowadays it's kind of just like second nature to just grab your phone. We don't realize how much we use our phone until it's taken away. So it was really hard. I kept finding myself just wanting to go on and see what everybody was doing, especially when I knew there were certain events going on or that some of my friends were out. I just wanted to see how it was going, but I did listen and I didn't check, so. That's great. I'm yeah. glad that you followed through with the assignment. Um, I wasn't expecting some type of big revelation about your life, saying, oh, well, now that I haven't looked at Instagram, my life is better. I wasn't expecting that at all. I just wanted to see how you felt about the assignment, if you actually completed it, and to kind of see where your thoughts were at in that aspect of your beliefs. So we're going to focus on further disputing that belief that you need to look on Instagram or be approved by others on social media and in your life in general in order to be a good and worthwhile person. Okay. So now we're going to work on disputing this irrational belief that you have through a series of questions that I'll ask you, and you'll just answer with whatever pops into your head first. Does that sound okay? Yep, that sounds good. Okay, so, do you know any other people who haven't joined or maybe weren't able to join a sorority? Yeah, I actually have two girls that are in my forensic psychology course who they tried to get into a different sorority than I did, and I found out that they didn't get in either. So that was comforting. 
Okay, so does their not being able to get into the sorority make them worthless? No, of course not. I mean, they are really good girls. I get along with them really well in class. And even though we aren't super close friends outside of class, it's just still nice to have that connection in class. And I would never want to judge them based on them not getting into a sorority. So they're still good enough in your eyes, even though they didn't join a sorority, right? Yeah. So why aren't you good enough if you didn't get into the sorority? I guess I just never thought about it like that. I, you know, hate to feel alone. So I was putting a lot of pressure on myself and I was just really excited to get into the sorority. But I just have to realize that it wasn't right for me. Okay. And that's totally okay. Things happen in life and we do have to accept them. Rejection is a part of things that will happen in our life, whether it's with a sorority Maybe getting into a major, but you already have that. Or maybe an internship or a job in the future. And we have to deal with those ways, the ways that are healthy and rational. Um, so what would you tell a friend in your situation? Um, if I was dealing with my friends that had this situation, I would want them to know that I would be their support system. I wouldn't want them to be down on themselves or depressed. I would want them to know that no matter what they have me as their friend, and that the sorority doesn't have to define them. Okay, so if you would tell a friend that the sorority doesn't define them, does that mean that it has to define who you are? I guess not. Um, I think that I was just being really hard on myself, and that it's really hard sometimes to take your own advice. You, mm -hmm. I think we always want somebody else to feel good and be there for our friends, but then when it comes down to it, it's really hard for us to accept what we're saying, mm -hmm. but I do understand that now. Okay. And that's understandable that you realize that. I'm really glad that you recognize that feeling um, that it's hard to take your own advice, so to speak. Um, I'm glad that you recognize that Maybe this belief that you need to be in the sorority or needs to be accepted by other people isn't the most rational belief. So now that we've recognized that maybe your belief isn't the most rational one that you need to be accepted by all other people, um, what are some ways that you could further dispute this belief on your own? I think that if I'm going to try to look at the bright side, I could take this experience of not getting into the sorority and try to venture into other organizations on campus. I really enjoy being a psychology major, and I would love to find out if I could join the psychology club. Um, I also could see if there's anything else on campus that okay. other clubs or organizations that I could get involved with. Okay, that's, I think that those are all great ideas. Um, just remember that in the future, rejection is always something that will happen. So don't be overly upset if, say, someone doesn't say hi back to you in the psychology club or other ways on campus. Uh, if you just think about these steps in REBT, that will be able to help you overcome those feelings. Um, so now that we have those beliefs figured out and we disputed them, what is a new way that we could think? Um, I guess I have to start thinking that I don't need the acceptance of others in order to feel good about myself, that it's not always about who I'm around, but just how I feel on the inside. So I think that I need to focus on me. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. Maybe we could turn that awfulizing belief into more of a preference, saying I prefer to have many friends. I would have preferred to join a sorority, but I'm still a good person even if I can't get all of the acceptance from everyone else. Exactly. Hi, Courtney. Welcome back. It's really good to see you again. It's good to see you too. How are you, Megan? I'm good, thanks. It's great to see you smiling a little bit more. You seem a little more upbeat, which is always a good sign, especially since today is our last session. So I will be sending you off into the world without your training rules on mm -hmm. so that you could practice some of the REBT techniques on your own or maybe even help some other people out along the way. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me a little bit how you're feeling overall about the situation, about yourself. I feel really good. I think that I have conquered that fear of needing to be accepted and 
I just feel like I can be myself now and I don't need other people to define me. I think that I think that's a great thing. That was we achieved one of your goals so you could feel better about yourself and dispute that irrational belief. So going forward, how do you plan on utilizing these techniques that we learned? I think I really enjoyed the technique on not using social media as much. It was difficult for me at first, but now I've realized how beneficial it is for me to not go on and constantly be reminding myself that I don't have those connections like everybody else does. I think it's healthier for me to just stay off and concentrate on myself and find something for me to do instead of worrying about everybody else. Okay, that's great. You could also use some of the self-help forms that are in REBT. So I know that you did one of those for homework one. So definitely, definitely feel free to pull those out of your pocket at any time. Absolutely. But it seems like now you're in a much better state about yourself, much more positive about yourself mm -hmm. and your whole uh, self-worth, and you've achieved self-acceptance. So I think that it's a good place to end here. So if you ever need anything, ever have any questions or concerns, definitely give me a call. I'm always around. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You're very welcome. Good luck. Thank you.